Our link has arrived. Here we go. Oh, so is Sludge. Hello, my darling. My lovely boy. What a beautiful boy. Getting old now. He's uh, 15 and a bit, coming on 16. And uh, anyhow, back to the uh, back to where it was. Yes, so Starlink has arrived. I've taken off the uh, the cell tape at the bottom. What do you get when you unbox Starlink? You get a very simple guide, basically saying download the app, plug the power cable in, and plug the dish in. See you, Sludge. I'll do a separate video on Sludge. He deserves one. And you got some plastic here. What looks to be a base. Another bit of plastic. What looks to be a uh, pole and the dish. It's got a cutout, so align that with the cutout there on the base. That clicks in, and you see there's a button there that pops out before being able to remove it. We have a base station or router, whatever you want to call it. And we've got two cables, power cable and the long cable that is attached directly to the dish. Looking at the uh, router or base station itself, quite sleek. I should add the, um, the satellite dish, you know, it's got a reasonable weight to it, feels quite sturdy. Looking on the bottom at what ports there are, which uh, being a bit of a techie nerd I love, I've got a power port and a port for the dish. There is no ethernet port and I did I was surprised by that and um, did read up on it and you can get an ethernet adapter. I think it's about 35 pounds, which will allow you then to have an ethernet cable, which for a lot of mesh network systems that is required. So um, basically I would have liked to have seen the ethernet port, but maybe it's to reduce costs for people that just want the router there and that's all they can do. But in my uh, situation, I'm going to be trying to share that over quite a wide area through mesh networks. So, um, I'm going to try using wireless um, bridges or wireless extenders, but then I'll also be trying using um, Ethernet cable and things like power line adapters to see what works best. And I'll be documenting that in further videos. So I really should have stuck with the cap because I need to uh, shave my head. <laughs> I'm a beard. Um, so yeah, that's what you get. The next task for me will just be doing some tests, plugging it in, uh, probably in this room, um, locating the satellite, up on the top of that wooden frame, though I'll do a test with it just being on the floor in the corner of the garden there, or this little bit of the garden. So we have the moment of truth here. We have the base station router plugged in here, not turned on yet. We have that plugged in via the satellite cable, funny enough, to the satellite dish. I've located over there, mainly because there are no obstructions. If we look up, which when you run the app, you can kind of see it's clear sky the whole way around. And you can do a search in the app to check, is that a suitable position? Longer term, it's gonna move, but it's a good way for running the test. It's a nice stable surface there. So if it did fall over in the wind, if I decide not to move it, because I'm watching the football later, um, then that will do the job. So I'm gonna go and plug it in. Oh, it's plugged in, go and turn it on. And at this point, we'll see what happens. Now, I may end up fast forwarding this bit on the video and I will show it if I do. One of the things it says is look to check that the little LED on the bottom of the router lights up. Just check, nothing happening to the dish yet. I'll look on the bottom of here. Yep, LED is lit up. I could go into the app and the app would say what's going on, but at this moment in time, I will just show this video and I'll probably uh, picture in picture the app starting up another time so you can kind of see what it's saying. There we go. Moving around, moving around. Really looking for those satellites and it's pretty much pointing up there. Seems a good time for me to go and run some tests and run the app and see what things look like. I'll do that now. Okay, so here we are. We're recording the um, iPhone screen. I've plugged in the base station router 
um, I've connected it to the dish. The dish has done its alignment thing to find the satellites. And I'm now going to go in and connect to it to see what speeds I am getting. So first things first, I go into settings. I look and I can see that there's a new Wi-Fi called Stinky. I love the fact it's called Stinky. That's entertaining. Click on Stinky. It's an unsecured network, so there'll be no password you need to enter. Now, first thing it's asking me to do is to create a network. I will create a network called Sludge. Sludge Beast. And I will put a password in. That will then create that. So it says reconnect to your network using your new password. All the details are there. So... I will go back into Wi-Fi settings. Wait and see if there is now a new pass, a new um, network name. Not yet. Give it a few moments, or if I want to speed it up, turn the Wi-Fi on and off, or off and on. There it is. Put in the password. I am now creating or connecting to that network, all done. And now for the moment of truth, I can go in to the Starlink app. It's showing online and let's click on speed. That's what we want to know. What I say in my first video, I was aiming for 100. I was hoping for more than 30, so I'll be delighted with 87. Upload of 16, very nice. Drop into 12, latency 33, again, all good. I'm not doing kind of um, first person shooters all that much. I do occasionally with friends. Um, it's mainly for the golf sim and for streaming movies and those kind of things and YouTube. So that looks very good to me. Let's have a look what Swipe for Advanced does. It's more like drag up. Uh, Wi-Fi speed. Let's do the advanced test. That's showing that the Starlink speed is actually far higher, though it is dropping. It initially started very high. So maybe it isn't far higher. It's actually adjusting down to the figures that we saw before. And I'm about half a metre away from the router. Um... And upload speeds, very good. So this is, as I say, the router to the internet. This is now me to the router. And I'm getting a throughput of about 78. 84, 85, yeah, about 80. And, oh, very good upload. Oh, that's to the, um, to the router, but yeah. So that's what um, Advanced does. Now, there are other things you can see. You can go to Statistics, which show your network st statistics. There is a shop for being able to order additional things. And Settings. Let's see what you've got under Settings. I always love going into Settings. Split the uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. Um, I don't see any reason why I need to. Um, custom uh, DNS. Uh, melting Snow. Okay, so it can melt the snow. Cool. Uh, you can tilt the dish for storage. So I did actually put it back in its box to do the unboxing because I'd already had a look just to check I'd, I'd got everything I needed. Um, so I did have to, having plugged it in and checking it worked, actually click on Stow Starlink to put it back into the kind of flat position where it could go back in the box. So there's something I probably didn't need to share with you. Uh, factory reset, yep. Having gone back to set it back to your basic settings, having created a network before, you it's a little bit clumsy, but it's fine. You plug it in, you pull out the plug, you plug it in, pull out the power cable, put it in, and then do it three times, and essentially that resets everything. And there's advanced down the bottom with some debugging data. You can reboot either the Wi-Fi or the Starlink itself. And to be honest, that's that. So I'm going to click speed one more time. See if anything has changed. Oh, funny enough, it's just gone very, very sunny and the clouds have cleared. And I wonder if that alone 
has helped it jump up to 158, um, which is, my mood has jumped up as well. I'll be delighted with that. So that is um, the initial test. My next challenge will be, how do I actually get this into the house in the right position? Because the cable is long. It's got a bit of an, a, um, I'll show you in a different video what the end of the cable looks like. And it does mean that I need to uh, effectively like drill a hole or find a way of channeling that into the house where the um, satellite can be outside and obviously the router can be located. And then I'll go about the uh, challenge of sharing this lovely high speed internet around. And of course, I will be reporting back with videos over the next few days, probably daily, to show how it's looking in terms of obstructions, in terms of uptime, changes in speeds, those kind of things. So I hope that is useful. I'll check in later. See you next time.